the Gamecocks and Cougars are going dancing. For 12 seeds in the tournament. A News 2 takes you every step of the way. Sports director Mark Morgan and Dan Fanning bring you a look at the seasons that led to the NCAA's biggest stage. With in-depth coverage live from Orlando and a complete look at the path ahead. Road to the Championship starts right now. And with that, we welcome you to Road to the Championship. I'm Mark Morgan reporting live from Orlando, and we have got you covered with team coverage. As you see right now, I'm live here in Orlando. My man Dan Fanning will have multiple live guests there in the News 2 studios in Mount Pleasant. And also, Sophia, uh, Sophia Radeball will also be on the College of Charleston campus, where she will take the temperature of those students, and I'm guessing their excitement is at a fever pitch. So we're going to talk about both the USC Gamecocks women's team and the CFC men. But we begin here in Orlando with the CFC men. 31 and 3. What a year. The 31 wins tying with the uh, Houston Cougars for the most wins in Division 1 basketball. Now the Cougars arrived in town yesterday. Let's kind of show you what transpired today here at the Amway Center to begin with. The Cougs uh, took the practice court uh, late morning, kind of shot around, uh, really just kind of a couple drills, getting used to the atmosphere, the lighting here, the rims, the court, really the whole vibe here at the Amway Center. Because remember, this is a different kind of deal. This is an NBA arena. The team was shooting a lot of threes and from my vantage point, hitting a lot of threes. So again, what a season it has been. And now in the national spotlight, this team is ready to get after it. I think we've proven uh, throughout the course of the season that uh, we can play different ways and different styles. And, and we've proven that we can win games against you know, teams that have this strength and this weakness. I know one thing, it's not going to be easy. I think just, just try to do what we do best. Um, we, don't, we don't try to look for the three um, as much as people might think, but we just try to get the biggest advantage shot that we can every time down. And I think we have good enough players to where if they do try to take away our three, um, you know, shot fake, drive by, uh, kicks and stuff like that. We got things that make us why we're here, and that's what we're planning on doing. Um, being great at us, we say it all the time, you know, they got to prepare for us just like we got to prepare for them. But, yeah, they're really good, and, um, but so are we, and, you know, we're, we're looking forward to it. It's going to be a good game. Every College of Charleston basketball fan knows my next guest, Everett German, is alongside nine years voice of the Cougars. Good to yeah. see you, man. Good to see you, Mark. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Everything's cool. Well, the reason we're here is this team, right? You follow this team, obviously, a long, long time. What makes this group different? I think it's just really the team chemistry. These guys really, really uh, play for each other. Uh, they, they always want to see their teammates excel. They don't really care who gets to shine. And when you have that type of mentality and you play as hard for yourself as you do for your brother, good things tend to happen for teams like that. Why do you think Pat Kelsey has been able to implement that type of culture, Everett, in just two years? I really, that's just, there's no, no deviation from that. I mean, I think when he brings kids in, he lets them know what's expected of them. You know, it's always the ABCs, you know, academics, basketball, and character. And he just won't take a kid because he's a good basketball player. It has to be more than that. He, he wants missing pieces. And so for his ability to get guys to buy in, kind of just fit their role, uh, not be selfish, just do what you do best, that's why I think he's had so much success in these two years. Okay, quickly, the key to tomorrow for the Cougs to win. Uh, well, shooting. I mean, you can't <laughs> you can't win games if you don't score points. And uh, fortunately, Charleston was able to win the CAA tournament without shooting the basketball fairly well. But don't think that'll be the case tomorrow. This San Diego State team, they're big, they're physical. Uh, they allow their opponents to shoot just 29% from behind the arc. So I think for Charleston, if they can just relax, they played in big arenas before, playing at the Dean Dome, obviously, right. uh, back in November, uh, I think we'll be fine. So nothing really phases this this team. It's an older team, a lot of veterans. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Cool. Good to see you, man. All right, good to see you, Mark. All right. You got it. So that's a little perspective uh, from this end on the CFC men. Let's go to my man Dan Fanning standing by live in the studio with a former CFC great. Dan? Yeah, Mark, that is right. Someone who knows a thing or two about the college and the NCAA tournament. Please be joined now by Cedric Weber, CFC Hall of Famer. And Cedric, you went dancing three times with a college, including that upset at 97 over Maryland. What do you remember some about those trips? Those are some great times. Um, we were called the quote unquote giant killers and Cinderella teams, but you know, in our minds, we were, we were as good as any other team that 
we got on the court with. So great times. And going off the giant killers, you just told me some of the teams you played Stanford, North Carolina. Obviously, you beat North Carolina. There you see up in Charlotte. What was Coach Cress's message before he played some of those big teams? Ooh, which message? Uh, <laughs> he had a lot of messages for us, but the bottom line is we we were always prepared, and our message was to leave everything out on the floor. You know, we were a team that, you know, didn't care who scored, what. We just was all about winning, and we did whatever it took to, to win the game. And even though that you graduated from the college, obviously you're still around the program a lot. What impresses you about this year's team? What impresses me, I actually had a chance to, to go to a few games, and I went to the locker room um, at the end of one of the games. They remind me of our crews um, because they, they leave it all out on the floor. They go hard. Um, they, they shoot a lot of threes. That's something that Coach Crest didn't allow us to do. But, you know, I, I think just the culture of winning, um, which is what we were all about when, you know, my crews came through my basketball teams. Um, I can see that with this uh, team. And, you know, we're looking and hoping for the best. Um, I hear all the news and everybody's saying it's going to be an upset. I don't think it's going to be an upset. I think we're just going to beat them outright. Um, if we're shooting well, of course, it's great. Um, but I think, as, as I saw a little bit earlier, um, uh, Everett was saying, you know, we, we've won games and we didn't shoot well. So that's always a plus that we do have shooters. But just playing hard and wanting to win, I think, is going to um, have precedence over everything. Hey, going off that, obviously, you've been through it. What does it take to win in March? It just takes a, a team, just like we, we just talked about, that wants to win and is going to leave everything out on the floor. Because when uh, March Madness get here, the records are out of the door. Everybody is 0-0. It's a clean slate. So whoever goes out there and whoever has their game plan to win and put it all out there on the floor and leave it all out on the floor just made the best team win. Because once again, you know, you got a lot of teams that shoot threes, but whoever can shoot those threes along with everything else, I think will win the game. I know you're very uh, prideful of your, your university and your oh, basketball yeah. program, but just right now, all the national spotlight that CFC is getting, kind of what does this mean to you and the former uh, CFC players that played with you? Sense of pride, you know, we, we've, our teams, you know, did have some national uh, spotlight, you know, back when I was coming up and it's kind of a lull here and there, but yes, it brings back a sense of pride and a sense of, you know, the College of Charleston is relevant uh, once again. Uh, we've always been relevant, but we wasn't in the, the spotlight nationally. I think a lot of teams knew and the nation knew, but now we're back on that main spotlight and, you know, hopefully we can keep it going and, and and go deep into this tournament. That would be nice. Cedric, again, I appreciate your time, and uh, thank you for coming in. We're yes, just sir. getting started here on Road to a Championship. When we come back, we talk about the USC women. Stay with us.